Thank you very much for that introduction, Amy. Can you hear me out there? Yes. Okay, great. Uh, it's great to be here today. My name is Kevin McCoy. I am from the regional uh, English language office in Kiev, Ukraine. And RELO supports English language learning in six countries. And today I'm here to talk to you about Activate, Games for Learning American English. I'm a self-confessed activator. That means I play these games a lot, as you will see. So what is Activate? It's a set of four different games. Guess what? These are cards. Board games. Word bricks. These are sentence building games. And some more cards called Picture This. In today's webinar, I'll show you how to use two of these games. But first, the history. Where did Activate start? Well, in an Access Micro Scholarship camp in the country of Jordan, we created these games from pizza boxes. We had pizza for lunch, and we thought, we should use these. So we, at the Office of English Language Programs created these games that can be used for all levels. And here is how we think Activate is different. Students are in the central role. That's the main thing. So it's all about students practicing. And Activate can be used at all levels. Today, we're going to look at two games. The board games and guess what cards. And I would like you to play. So let's start. Here's how you play guess what. You see this card? Raise your hand if you can see the card. Oh good, people can hear me. On the top of it, you'll see a topic, in this case, in the classroom, and underneath six words. You can write this on the board for the first time. Then the important thing then is to do a demonstration. Choose a card, tell them the topic. The topic is in the classroom. The students will describe the word. Actually, you will describe the word and students will guess. And you describe all six words on the card. So it's my turn to do a demonstration. Here I am with a card. And my topic is things that are round. Now your microphone is turned on. So when you know the answer, please shout the answer. I will describe six things. The first, are you ready? Things that are round. Okay, the first thing is it's in the sky at night. It can be very romantic. It's big and bright. I can't hear any answers. Uh, okay, good. Now I can see them in the chat. Okay, thank you. The next one, this is on the wall. 
Wait. Uh... Okay, now I see. Yes, you're correct. The next one, this is on the wall and it tells time. Okay, now I can hear you. Perfect. Uh, and the next one, this is a name for our planet. What we call our planet. Uh-huh, good. And the next one, it is a fruit and it's round and it grows on trees and we make juice from it. And its color is the same as its name. Very good. And this is something that children like to play with. It's the most basic toy. We use it in soccer and many games. Thank you. And finally, this is what you carry on the top of your neck. We all have it and use it. Exactly. All right. Good job, everyone. Good job, alumni. So it's fun to play with the teacher describing, but then the teacher gets all the practice. It's best to put students into groups and give them one of the cards. When they finish with a card, simply rotate the card or circulate it to another desk. Here we see some kids in Africa playing, guess what? All right, let's play right now in Baku. Here's what we're going to do. Form groups of three persons, two, three people. It can be the person next to you, okay? Yeah, thank you, Amy. You don't need to move much. We are ready. Okay, great. You have groups. Now, each person should have a player number player one, player two, player three. Yeah. Okay, I think we're ready. All right, player one. Raise your hand if you're player one. Only player one. Okay. Player one, only you can look here at the screen. Other players do not look. Ready? Only player one, look at the screen. Player one, the card is about to appear. Other people do not look. All right, player one, here is your card. Tell the group your topic and then describe the words, player one only. So player one should describe the words and the other players guess, right? Okay, great. Okay. 
know how to play. Let's give everyone a chance. Player two. Player two. You are now the describer. Other players, you will guess. So now, player two, only you look at the screen. Other players don't look. Are you ready for your card, player two? Here we go. Tell them the topic and then describe. good at this lots of speaking practice huh lots of speaking practice okay let's do it one more time player three it's your turn you are the describer other players you are the guesser so only player three looks at the screen are we ready the last card and tell us the topic and then describe the five words. I'm <laughs> 
Great. You are very fast. Great work, everyone. You'll notice that this card is made by hand. And that's what we do in Activate. Activate is made to be a model so that you can create your own games. Look at this card. The topic is in the desert, but someone wrote the translation in Ukrainian. Do you think that's a good idea? Yeah. Someone says yes. I think it's a good idea. Teachers often don't think we should use translation. But the real skill in this game is describing, using language. It's not memorizing words. In this case, the student always knows what the word means. If the student doesn't know what the word means, he often shows the card to the rest of the group, and your game is finished. Now, Activate game cards are all free to download from the internet, but you can also make your own cards very easily. Just like that one. And you can also have students make the cards. Start by generating topics. See how we have topics. And then after that, it's easy to think of the six words underneath the topics. Countries, Azerbaijan, China, Brazil, America. So you have now played Guess What? We're going to move on to activate board games. Board games have been in existence for a long time, more than 3,000 years. So they work great in the classroom. Stand up if you have used board games in your class. Wow, I heard Amy say, wow, that's a lot. I agree. Okay, this is great. Okay, stand up if you have never used board games in, the, in English class. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> Three or four. Three or four. Okay, thanks, Shaila. It's interesting because uh, in an international webinar with about 1,000 teachers, we asked this question. Do you often play board games in your class? And 16% of people never played board games. 38 very rarely. And in the poll, we asked why. What are the obstacles to using board games? And one of the answers is it's hard to get all students playing, 30%. Well, Activate is designed so that all students play the board games. Because the board games can be very simple on pieces of paper. And all we need are four things to play. Players, dice, game pieces, and the board. Here's an infographic that shows you how to play very simply.
What if you don't have dice? A die. Well, there's many ways you can make them. Here we've made one out of an egg carton. It has a little stone in it. You close it and you shake. And you see your number. This pencil also works as a dice. Pencil has, pencils have six sides and you can roll them. Or you can write numbers on pieces of paper like these kids in South Africa. Or make a dice out of paper, a die out of paper. So here's one of our Activate board games. It's called Would You Rather? So what do you prefer? Let's play. I'd like a volunteer for the, from the audience to come up and play with me. Do we have a volunteer who wants to play the game with me? Okay, great. I had to go get my die. So I, okay, I'll go first. I'm going to roll the die. And I got a one. So, space number one. Would I rather be a baker, a dentist, or an accountant? Well, I would rather be a baker because I hate going to the dentist and I don't like numbers, but I do like eating sweet things. So I'd rather be a baker. All right, who's going to play with me? I'm going to roll the die again. Wow. We got a big six. So let's move along the board. One, two, three, four, five, six. So my question for this person is, would you rather have the perfect job or a perfect husband? <laughs> I see people answer. So tell me why. Oh, there's our play. Mm. Can we come to you and say this again? So, Here's our volunteer, and she's going to ask. Hi, Kevin. Hi. You look familiar. How are you? I'm doing yeah. fine. <laughs> you met in Moldova last time. Ah. Okay. I knew you. I knew. I knew. I knew you. Uh huh. Uh, okay. I said. Um, uh, I would say that uh, uh, I would prefer both of them, but in in this case, I would use the perfect husband. Mm, okay. And why? Um, um, because the um, husband might be rich, uh, and uh, um, and I I think I don't have to work much. That's why. Ah. So you want the perfect husband who has a perfect job? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Okay. Okay, thank you. Let's try one more. I'm going to roll the dice again. Okay, thank you. Thank you. I got a two. So we move along. One, two. Do we have another volunteer who would like to answer this question? Would you rather visit Ireland, Japan, or Hawaii? We do have another volunteer. Yes, I'm here. Hello. Hi. Hi. 
So can you answer, would you rather visit Ireland, Japan, or Hawaii, and why? I never was there, but I dream about visiting all of these countries one by one. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Which would you rather visit first? Oh, Japan. Why? Japan, yes. uh, because, because I like, maybe not so like Japanese uh, language, but I um, very, very respectful for this person and I'm historian, I'm not English teacher. I, yes, I like to see uh, by my own eyes this Hiroshima, Hiroshima, Nagasaki, and the, the historical places. Hiroshima and Nagasaki? Oh, okay. Good answer, thank you. Okay. All right, so you see how the board games are played. We simply roll the die and take turns. Okay, so the games work best when we give one game to each group of students. So, for example, one game with two students, one game with four, one game with ten students. How many students are in a typical class in Azerbaijan? How many students do you have in your classes? Fifteen, twenty. Oh, you're very lucky. Small classes. In one group. Yes, but at one time, right? At one time. <clears throat> teachers in, yeah, teachers in Africa, or Jordan sometimes had sixty, a hundred, so. 20 is not bad. <clears throat> so when we let students play board games, how long do we let them play? Teachers often think, oh, it's just fun, so we do it for five or 10 minutes. I think students can play as long as they are engaged, as long as they are practicing English. I think they're learning. What about controlling students' grammar during games? Well, I'll tell you. I think these are games, let the students play. Let them succeed at speaking English, even if they don't speak correctly. But you know what? There is also hidden grammar in the games, hidden structure. We just did the would rather game. If you had played the whole game, each sentence is I would rather. So it teaches a structure through high repetition. That's how we learn a language. Students practice through high repetition. Here's another activate board game. It's called what you might find. So for example, if I roll a Three, what you might find in the ocean. In the ocean, you might find treasure. You might find sharks. You might find sunken ships. So you see, this is built around a structure that students can practice again and again. How's, how about this one for those of you who love the present perfect. It's all repeating one structure. If I roll a five, three, four, five. Have you ever been to another continent? Basic student can say no. More, an intermediate student will say no, I haven't. Or, yes, I have. When? 
I have been to Europe. I went to Europe last year. So there's a lot of structure inherent built into the games. We do not have to explain the structure. The purpose of a game is to let students explore and practice. So what does it look like when students play in groups throughout the classroom? It looks like this. This is Indonesia. They're playing an Activate board game that they printed from the internet. We have about 10 students for one group. Here we are in West Africa, five students for one group and one American. Uh, I think this is Kyrgyzstan maybe, two students playing. Playing on the floor in Indonesia. Lots of teachers playing in Africa. So it's a good idea to, students can have different games. Each group of student can have a different game. We give them five or 10 minutes and then we rotate the games, change them. Here I am in Ukraine with a bunch of teachers. Each group has a different game. After eight or 10 minutes, I just move the games. It's a matter of putting students into groups. If you have 80 students, you only need to print 18 board games to have five per group. But if you have 15 or 20 students, like you do in Azerbaijan, it's really easy. Activate can be used at all levels. Look at this, it looks like a basic language game name your favorite right so for example i roll a one from the bottom of the board and we hit season basic level student says my favorite season is summer and that's it but a more advanced student can say this I like autumn best because the colors are so vivid and the air has a kind of smoothness to it. So the game works at all levels. It depends on the player. Activate is also reusable. Let's look at this favorite game. Name your favorite. The first time we play, we do this. Maybe two weeks later, we play the game again. Name your three favorites. Maybe two months later, we play the game again, but we say, name your least favorite. So we can use the games again and again. I'm sure you can think of other variations to play with this game. And if you can't, there is a manual to tell you how to play variations on Activate. It is free to download. So if you want to find these games, you can look at AmericanEnglish.state.gov. It will look like this and you can print the games yourselves. You can print the manual, you can print the cards, Everything is free at AmericanEnglish.state.gov. And the manual tells you how to use the games again and again, and how to use them effectively. I hope you will download these and explore and learn how to play with word bricks. And picture this, we didn't talk about them today. Most of all, Activate was created so that teachers can emulate or copy the samples, make their own board games. Here's a board game that I made by myself. It's not beautiful, but it works. 
My wife made this one. Hers are more beautiful. And also, you can download this from American English templates to make your own. In Ukraine, for International Games Day, we played Activate throughout the country. 1,800 people played. Let's see if you can, let's watch a little video.